I'm Owen Biglen. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, it's Saturday. Time for one of my motivational blogs, the ones that I really enjoy doing a lot, uh, where I can kind of impart some of the things I've learned over the last 33 plus years in real estate and in investing and just the stuff that I've learned from my mentors over the years here that they've passed on to me and I wanna pay it forward here to my viewers and especially a lot of my younger viewers as well. So this one's gonna be fun. I'm gonna call this one kind of the difference between how I don't want to call it rich man, poor man thinking, but let's call it the difference between how successful people think, their mentality, their outlook on things versus people that are struggling, having a hard time. And listen, we during this COVID times, this has magnified itself a great deal. And I feel for people, I've done many blogs on this. There are a lot of people who are struggling. They're disenfranchised. They're falling further behind. You see the numbers every, every week coming out on reports of how the middle class is shrinking. The wealthier are getting wealthier and the poor are falling further and further behind. And this has been going on for decades and it's accelerating. And the reason for that, as I've said, and I talk about it in my book, and I've done many blogs on this, so much of this is the person's mental attitude and how they think towards things. And you know, if you want a prime example of this, all you've got to do is go onto, a, onto Twitter, have a look at some financial articles or articles on investing or interest rates, or a good example was the dust up that I got in with Evan Sindal. Uh, you know, people and the leverage uh, tweet that I did. You know, there's two camps. There's the people that understand how leverage works and how it can be used in your favor. Use it in a controlled way. It's really the only way to build wealth. There's not enough working hours in the day and you're not gonna earn your way to any type of financial success. You're not. You have to get your money working for you. Leverage is a way to, to magnify that, but you've gotta use it carefully. So. You can see on Twitter the people that get it and then the ones that don't. So let me just give it to you in a nutshell here. Let's talk about the people that the way struggling people think and they all think the same way. Some can be converted because I convert many of them over the years. I've had so many incredible stories of people that have been watching my blog here for years and years and I've changed their thinking or they bought my book. They were struggling, bought my book, it introduced them to getting their money working for them, getting their money into the stock market, into ETFs, buying good quality dividend paying stock, getting their money out of a bank account, paying them half of 1%. Remember, you always wanna have an emergency fund and the best place for that is in a bank account. After that though, you've gotta get your money giving you better returns, otherwise you're doomed. This is the way struggling people think. <laughs> and they're, it's all the same. They always, always are obsessed and focused on the downside of things. So in that leverage tweet I did with Evan Sindal, they don't focus on what leverage can do for you by holding a property because it takes away almost all the risk if you could buy a home, put 20% down and keep it for 20 or 30 years. <laughs> they only focus on how leverage can go bad on you bad on you, like what happens if the market goes down 10% in two years and you've got to sell? Well, nothing happens. You don't sell. You don't commit to something when you're using leverage and think you have to sell it in a year or two. Otherwise, you should not be buying a house. Eight to 10 years, minimum, or have a backup plan to be able to hold it. This takes much of the risk out of this. And the alternative, again, is to get into fixed income, which is a recipe for disaster. 1% and inflation's running at two and a half. But they are obsessed with only looking at the dark side of things. They are pessimistic, they are angry, they are envious, they are mad. You know, there's a quote that I tweeted out a while ago. Most people don't understand how money works and they get mad at the ones that do. Spot on. They've, they've got these blinders on. Everything is negative. I have no idea. Maybe some of them have bought some speculative mining stock and lost all their money. I, I'm not sure. Maybe they bought a piece of real estate, didn't buy the right piece of real estate, were forced to sell it in a couple of years at a loss. Well, that's, that's on you. That's not the way I preach to do, have been preaching to do it. But they only focus on the dark side. They don't realize that if you want superior returns and getting your money working for you, you have to get your money to work. Think of it as every dollar like a soldier putting it out to war. You're gonna have some casualties along the way, but if you hold it and buy the right 
assets, you will have tremendous success in 20, 30, 40 years. It's plain and simple. If you don't take my word for it, please read up on this stuff. Read books on Warren Buffett. Read good books on investing. The other thing I find with negative people or with people that are struggling, people that don't really have a whole lot of money, uh, they're complaining for sure, is they're waiting for the cavalry to arrive. They're always waiting for someone to come and bail them out. It's not their fault. As I said many times before, they don't want to take the mirror test. They're always waiting for some white knight to come in and rescue them and coddle them and it's not your fault. So for most people, it's, you know, the government. They think that, you know, Carol James or Horgan or, or, or Justin is going to come in and help them in some way or Evan Sindel is their hero. I've got news for you that the cavalry isn't on the way, folks. It's not coming. The cavalry is looking at you in the mirror every morning. That's the cavalry. That's my cavalry. I've always just relied on myself. And I've often said, you know, government's not your friend. They're not here to be your friend. They're not here to help you buy a house. That's going to be on you. Sure, they can do little band-aid things here and there to try and help it out and, and keep the market, uh, you know, in check. But overall, at long term, it's not going to have any effect. It, it, it's totally on your shoulders. And so many negative people just don't want to admit to that. And that's their problem. They point the fingers. It's everyone's fault but themselves. It's the realtors, it's the banks, it's the low interest rates, it's the foreign buyers, it's the money laundering. They listen to these bloggers who kind of reinforce this blame game. And it's, it's horrible because it's just more wasted time. Time that they could spend instead of complaining, working on themselves and moving up the ladder. But it amazes me how clear as day it is to me and most of my colleagues and the people that I associate with. But I can just tell some of the comments and people, they are just, just have their blinders on. Everything is negative. They don't want to learn this stuff. And at the end of the day, when you get into your 50s and 60s and have no one to, nothing to show for it and you've been renting for forever and you're struggling, well, it's on your shoulders. I feel for you. And that's why I've been trying to, why I do this blog and why I wrote my book to try and give you the tools to help you. So this is what, let's turn the page here, what successful people. Successful people are optimists. Doesn't mean that they don't see risk. Doesn't mean that they don't see dark clouds. I do all the time. But I focus on me, what I have control over. Interest rates, foreign buyers, <laughs> which are non-existent. All these other elements that I have no control over, why would I care about that? The economy, pipelines being built. I just focus on myself, getting better at my career, serving my clients, paying myself first, and putting my money to work, either through real estate or stock. And I know that there's going to be good years and bad years. I focus more on what the income my assets produce for me, so the rent checks I get, and the dividend checks I get helps me stay the course. That's the way successful people look at it. If you want those superior returns, you're gonna have some volatility along the way. If you give it enough time, 20, 30, 40 years, which is what saving for retirement and buying your principal residence is gonna be, then you're gonna do fantastic. You gotta take my word on that because I've been there and done it. They're usually optimistic. They focus on themselves. It reminds me of a, I was reading, uh, listening to the, an interview with David Iger, or uh, Bob Iger from Disney. He had an interesting, he was talking about, you know, being an optimist and your outlook on things. He was saying that, you know, he does a lot of these commencement speeches at universities, meets a lot of, of uh, you know, young uh, university graduates. And he says they're, they're far smarter than he was at his age, and I would agree. But he also says that they're, they're more pessimistic. Uh, and I would agree with that as well. I think the whole thing with Twitter and all these stats and all of the anonymous bloggers out there have caused people to be a lot more pessimistic. I didn't have a lot of that when I was on my way up. I just focused on, put my blinders on, got ahead, paid myself first, got better, tried to get better in every way, either in my career, in learning more, reading more books, physically, mentally, everything. That's what life is about. It's fun. You'll enjoy it as you progress up. 
You know, successful people, for the most part, don't spend very much time at all on predictions, statistics, market stats, analysts. It's all a, t a total waste of time. Nobody knows what the stock market's going to do this year, next year. It's all guesses. Instead, just focus on buying quality companies and holding them. Monitor them for sure. Just like nobody knows what the real estate market is going to do going forward. What I tell people though is be expecting corrections. We should get a 5 to 10% what I call run of the mill correction in Vancouver real estate every three years or so. We should get something more major every eight to 10 years. I've been through so many corrections in this market I lost count, but it, it shouldn't mean anything to you if you're buying your principal residence and living it and enjoying it, or you're an investor and you're putting a tenant in it for the next 20 years until the tenant pays it off. Then look at it. That's all that should matter. Successful people have a long-term outlook. They know that to get the superior returns, there's gonna be ups and downs along the way. If you can't get that through your head, you are doomed. You have no hope. A lot of these people I see on Twitter have no hope and they're just making it worse by complaining and wasting time. And some people I'm hoping to reach with this blog and convert them because I do all the time. Others, lost cause. But hey, good try. But they spend very little time on statistics, that kind of thing. They don't watch much of the mainstream media, I've often said. Tune out CNN, defund it. It's all negative, pessimistic, spin. Read books, read books on how to get better. Sure, if you've got some downside time, watch a movie, travel, all that stuff is great. But for the most part, you should be trying to spend your time, your downtime on ways to improve, learn, getting your knowledge level up, as opposed to watching these endless news streams and Twitter garbage and everything else. It's a total waste of time. All my successful friends and people I associate with do not spend a whole lot of time watching the news or focusing on these predictors and, and stats and all this other garbage that's out there. It's a waste of time. You know, the final thing is, uh, you know, and I've blogged about this a few times here, you know, the, the, the how to rise above you know, most successful people have their life optimized and I can't express how important this is. I've done several blogs on this, uh, far beyond driven, I call it. This is optimizing your life outside of your career. So this means getting enough sleep, your nutrition, working out, staying in shape, staying mentally sharp. This is so important. All the successful friends that I've got all have a workout regimen. They all keep an eye on their diet. It doesn't mean you have to be dieting strict. I eat pizza and burgers and candy bars all the time. But I also work out five days a week. I've got a trainer. I, I, I uh, you know, Bob Iger is a prime example of that. If you, if you look into some of the work habits, and that's why I like the Tim Ferriss blog a lot, because he delves into a lot of this with very high level CEOs and athletes. They've all got a regimen to optimize their life. When you get my age, you have to. You need that edge, you gotta have that energy. And that's kind of the final key there. That ties everything together. Because if you don't feel good, you're not gonna function very well. You're not gonna have a good outlook on life. That's probably why a lot of these people are so negative with their doom and gloom. And they only look at the negative side. They're probably feeling terrible all the time. They're overweight or they just don't feel well. It's horrible. It all ties together. You are always going to struggle until you realize you've got to get your money working for you. You're going to have to take on some leverage. Don't over leverage. Pay yourself first. Get your money working for you. It's the only hope you have. You're not going to work enough hours in the day and you're not going to save your way to retirement. You've got to invest your way. I'm Old Big Len. As always, thanks to all my new subscribers. I'm closing in here now on a million views coming up on 6,000. I've got a ton of new subscribers here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.